Okay, so exponential growth of the picture looks like this. Yeah. And what you want the businesses to look like? Yeah. So it's the opposite of Brady stocks. <laughs> that would be exponential decay, which would be like this. Get smaller and smaller every time. Um, so, on a lot of times, if populations have no um, detrimental effects, this is what a population would look like. Because you know, if everybody's doubling themselves, it gets, it gets faster and faster as it goes up. So if every generation doubles, that would be like to the X, where X stands for the generation. And so population can move. So a lot of time on the, the population of the Earth through history has looked like this. And then it went like that. Guess what happened? And now it's kind of like this again. What year is it at that, that curve that goes up? This would have been like in the last the 90s. couple hundred years probably, right? 200 years ago, about right here. Um, okay. People stopped dying. They call it modern medicine, right there. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was getting at. Baby boomers. Baby boomers. Well, that's when people and then right here is like, they go back from war. Uh, like, yeah. Birth control, I guess. <laughs> 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 okay, um, that's number one. We're going to talk about money a little bit here. Um, I, th I don't know what I was... I wrote something down, but now that I'm looking, I think I meant 1 through 24, but I don't really want to do that. 1 through 12? Let's do 1 through 20 and like 35 through 38, probably. Whoa. Whoa. Is this a two day assignment? No. I feel like you get that stuff. That's really good if you get three days. Yeah. Yeah. On three day assignment. That doesn't sound like me at all. Yeah. It's just page 34. How do we get Evan Hyde to do the assignment? Oh, we have, actually. Well, we did one of the chapter reviews for Giant. Dude, there wasn't any. Okay. Like chapter 6. Uh, uh, probably not. 1 through 20. Did you want me to 35 through 38. Alright. That's just 38. You wouldn't be out. <laughs> it would have worked out. So you wouldn't have answered it. You wanted the first one? No, because that was the only thing that was left. Uh, okay. So, let's see. On <coughs> money, I uh, can't remember what letters they use in different books. Different letters. I'm gonna try. I'll find what they. Okay, got it. I think we saw this. No, we did in Algebra One. I know that was a long time ago. Um, let's guess what these letters stand for. Acceleration. Appreciation. Amount. Amount. Equals P. Percent. Well, I'm actually I'm kind of guessing on that one. I don't know what, why they put that. Percent. I know what this one stands for. Principal. Principal. Got it. It's not your pal principal. It's your. Does it, you guys remember what principal means? Well, principal. It's like the initial investment or the initial amount that you borrowed. Either one. The, the initial amount that the bank invested in you. Uh, R. We should get that one. Rate. 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 This would be like rate of interest yeah. if we're talking about money. It could this could apply to populations. It's not necessarily money. Okay, if the population increases four percent every year, four percent. What would you say? Is that a one or an L? That's a one. What's T stand for? Time. Time. Usually, depending on what the problem is, time is measured in years. If it's money, it is. Uh, but if it's like the bacteria doubles every day, time could stand for days. 
the time stamps for hour because I'm just making so much money that you have to measure yeah, of course, yeah. Could be seconds or minutes, whatever. Could be anything. But when we're talking about money, we we measure our interest rate per year. <coughs> so it's years generally. Um, yeah. So initial amount. So what happens is, let's say if you invested a thousand dollars and you're going to get four percent every year. What's four percent as a normal number? Zero point four. Point zero four. Um, right. Four percent. You guys remember changing. Yeah. Percents to decimals, you move the decimal place twice. There's no decimal place at the end. So it's 0 .04. 0 .04 is literally four one hundredths, right? Which is 4%. Anyway, so this would be like 1.04. What happens when you multiply by a number bigger than 1? It gets, it gets bigger. <laughs> and if you did that for three years, that's like multiplying by 1.04. If you multiply by a number a little bit bigger than one, it's going to get a little bit bigger. If I multiply by 0 0.04, that'd be like 40. If I multiply by 1.04, that would be, that times one is 1,000, times 0.04 is 40, so it's 1,040. Anyway, after the first year, and then the second year, you'd get, you'd get a little bit more than 40 because you're, you're getting interest on your interest, right? So goes up a little faster. So you get like 41 bucks. What? So principal would be the 1,000, right? Yeah. Okay. It's the initial amount, starting amount. And it doesn't have to be a rate of increase. You could be, it could depreciate or the population could be dropping like, like Brady stocks. And then in that case, it would be like negative 4% or something like that. So you would be multiplying by 0.96 in that case. So when you multiply by a number less than one, the value goes down a little bit. Don't worry, Don't make any of that. I'm not that. like, I'm a freaking rich. I'm I can buy and sell you. Okay. Oh, that's why I didn't do those. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to change this sign again. No, 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 we're still doing that part. Um, let's do, well, because one through six is graphing. That's why I didn't assign many of the B graphs. Yeah, we'll, we'll still do like 18 minutes. Yeah. So like you're gonna sell like controllers and stuff. We'll probably go to eighteen and then jump. Sorry, what'd you say? We're gonna go to eighteen and twenty one. Or we're gonna eighteen. Yeah. 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 yeah, we should no, also we should also just take out the thirty five through thirty eight. That's it. Oh, eighteen to twenty. Okay. Okay. Uh number one just says graphs. You guys ready? Oh, uh, I can guess. How I'm gonna gra figure out the graph for this? Plug in stuff. Guess what I'm gonna plug in? The principles. Okay, what's a way we could kind of, kind of cheat and get a? Uh, we could. Uh, you could use your graphing calculator and plug it in and get a. The pro problem with the graphing calculator is you can't see clearly what points are going on, so you don't get exact points when you go to graph it, and I can tell because, yeah. anyways, um, we'll do these five for all of them. So, what's two to the negative two? On, I'm looking at number one. What is two to the negative two? What's two to the second? Two to the second. What is two to the second? It's four. What does a negative exponent do? Well, it's going to invert it to a point over four. So it's one fourth. So at negative two, it's going to be at one fourth. What's two to the negative one? One half. One half. One half. Yeah, it just flips it upside down. What's two to the zero? Zero. No. Yeah, it would be zero. Okay. Anything zero to it? Zero exponent is one. Right. One. Uh -huh, two to the one? Two. Two to the two? 
So negative two one fourth would be about right there. A little higher probably. Okay, and then negative one, one half. Sorry to be exact. Give me some more. Zero, one. One, two. Two, four. What if I did two to the negative one million? What would I get? Two to the negative one million? One over one million. No. It would be okay. one over two to the million or millionth. I just put a thousand because I'm shorter. Anyway, it'd be one over two to the millionth. Uh, what's two to the millionth? Really big. So you know, yeah. it wouldn't fit on the calculator. So what's one over a giant number is really close to what? Zero. Yeah. It, it would it not be, it wouldn't be negative, but it would be really close to zero. So what's happening as you go backwards, it's getting closer and closer to zero, but it never gets there. So the number just keeps getting smaller. So yeah, I'm not gonna be able to draw it. Gotta try to miss. I gotta try to miss. Yeah. So what you're telling me is, if you use this, you'll never be broke. It's kind of like if you keep cutting a number in half, it gets smaller and smaller, but you'll never get to zero or below. Uh, so when a line approaches something and never gets there, this line right here is called the asymptote. I better spell that. Okay, so it, it's approaching this line, but it'll never get there. You guys know what the equation for this line is? The x-axis? It's y equals zero. Because all the y values are zero. Gotcha. Um, that'd be a horizontal asymptote. Sometimes there's a vertical asymptote, and there is not. It looks like there might be one, but there's not. It, you can go as far to the right as you want. You can plug in, you know. A million for x, it's okay. It'll just be really, really high. Anyway, uh, that's all I asked for was a graph, right? Yep, okay, that's it. Number two, uh, if you use negative two to two, you'll get four squared is 16. So you, you might want to count by twos or something. And just put your, uh, just keep your x-axis at the bottom, right? Because everything on these first problems is happening up here. So just keep your x axis at the bottom. Oops. Yeah. Number three, one half to the x. What happens if you keep multiplying a number one half times one half? It it's going to get smaller. So I'm trying to see if you guys. Guess what the picture is going to look like? So this is kind of, in, in a way, it's like the opposite of number one. Because number one was two to the x. This is the is number one. Four. Okay, yeah, one half squared. One half times one half is one fourth. One times one, two times two, one fourth. Uh, but the negative flips it, so it's four over one, or just four. What's one half to the negative one? Two. The negative exponent flips it. What's one half to the zero? One. What's one half to the one? One half. What's one half squared? One to the one fourth. One okay, if you get confused, you can use your calculator to do it, but I'm just plugging them all, all the x's right there. Uh, negative two, four, so that'd be right, right there. Negative one, two, zero, one. What do you mean, it was Jackson? 
thing is literally Jackson. <laughs> Jackson. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure everyone believes you. So it's supposed to go backwards. Yeah, this would be the exponential decay. Brady, we got that on the video. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should it's go back. Best we, can, we, can, we can play the evidence in court. Yeah. It's the best when you're playing video games and you can just hear. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's that? Yeah, what was the second part? Like, remember like, the first thing you said that you go by two or something? Oh, well, on number two, four squared is 16, so that's really tall. So you might want to count by something other than ones. That looks like Brady stops right there. Uh, if you do, by the way, on number two, if you do count by something other than ones, you need to label the graph, like at least the first line or something. If you put a two or something right there, so I know what you're counting by. All right, number five. Y equals negative three to the X. What does a negative in front of a function usually do to it? Upside down. Upside down. Upside down. Okay, here we go. What is, all right, this will probably throw us off. What is negative three to the negative two? Six. No. Nine. Nine. Negative nine. six. One over nine. Okay. Uh, yeah, Aiden got the closest. It's actually negative, negative, one, over it's negative one over nine. Uh, why is it still negative? Because the negative comes from negative. Because there's no parentheses around this. Yeah. So the exponent does not apply to the negative. It's kind of order of operations thing. Negative comes after the exponent. But anyway, uh, it's negative one over nine. What's negative three to the negative one? Negative one. I mean negative, no, negative one over three. Right, negative one over three. What's negative three to the zero? One. Negative. Negative one. Still. Yeah, the negative's still untouched, so all these are going to be negative, basically, because you put the negative on at the end of all these. Okay, um, three to the one is three, so negative three. Negative nine. So on this one, you might put your uh, x-axis way up here. That way, because it's all negative, right? So it's going to go down, down. So, uh, here, let me put a line right there. Um, negative 2, negative 1 ninth. Pretty bad because negatives would mean you owe them. <laughs> Did you hear about the the kid who killed himself because he was using like this stocks app and they loaned him a bunch of money and the app like glitched or something and he lost it all because like it wouldn't let him like sell his thing on time and then the company tried to like get after him because he owed like six hundred thousand dollars and then he killed himself over it and the family suing the company for like. Has he heard of declaring bankruptcy? I can't take anything. I guess not. All right. Um, Wait, can you just like declare bankruptcy and then not have to pay taxes? No. Yeah, right. You should try it. <laughs> no, you can't.
can go for jail for tax evasion. I can take my taxes. Uh, okay, number seven. Okay. Um, so basically, seven is like number one, right? Uh, y equals two the x. What's that negative in front going to do to it, though? We can't. We just did a negative. What's the negative yeah. in front? It makes it go down. So it's number one, but it's the negative version of number one. So you can kind of cheat on these. Just use your answers from number one and do what to it? Make all the y values negative. So where it was, um, the first one we had was one fourth. So just put negative one, negative two, negative one fourth. Uh, just look at your number one, basically. Well, it's kind of part of the directions I told you to do that, really. It says, uh, graph each function as a transformation of y equals 2 to the x. State its domain and range. Make them all negative. Yeah, so it's just number one upside down. That's what Drew stopped. Yeah, they weren't negative. <laughs> we, we can't make all the jokes. They're not. They're I'm not pretty sure we can't. Okay, Yeah, because errors mean they keep going forever, so yeah, they do go forever both directions. Okay, number nine. This is a kind of a trick question. When you put, we've done this before, so it is within our, it is possible that we know this answer. What happens when you put a plus one directly on the x? What happens to the graph? It goes up by a different degree. No. It goes right. No. Left. Left one. Yeah. Remember? We guess every direction except for us. <laughs> so, you guys remember when we have like y equals x plus 1 squared plus 3? This means left 1 up 3, right? Uh -huh. So, yes. so how am I going to, anyway, so on number uh, 9, the graph's going to move left 1 from number 1. So take all your answers to number one and move the left one. Basically what happens is all everything happens one sooner. So everything's left one. That's how I think about it. Everything moves left one from number one, so it looks like this. So we'll go to like negative three instead for the first one? Or? So this, it was negative two, one fourth, and now it's negative three, one fourth. Oh, okay. So start our x, y, z. Back, yeah, just backwards. We don't need to do the XY. Yeah, I'm not making a table. I'm just using number one. Okay. So it'd be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one for our X values. Okay. No, it's no longer zero, one. It's left one, so it's negative one, one. Everything moves left one from number one. Okay, before a table. Does that, did we change I'm, not, I'm not using a table. Just using number one. Minus three is going to do to the function. It's not a trick question. Where? On number eleven. Down three. Down three. That is correct. So take your graph from number one and move it down three. It'll be about right here. Thank you. 
It's taking longer than I thought. These graphs, we're gonna have, okay. We'll go to 16 and then we'll do 35 to 38. No wonder I didn't make the assignment that big. I'm starting to remember now. Thank you, fine sir. And it's also two days, right? Incorrect. <laughs> okay, number 13. This will be really quick, short and sweet, because they're not graphs. Um, just a, a short answer. Is this just plugging it into that formula? Right yes, it's rewriting that formula I had at the beginning. So number one says 10,000. Oh, shoot, I didn't com talk about compound interest. Oh, oh. <laughs> Two day assignment. No. <laughs> okay, it's almost the same. Don't panic. Nobody panic. I'm panicking. I'm panicking. <laughs> We're at 17. We're at 17. 13. 13. Making you panic even more. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a graph? No. no. Are we graphing interest? I think okay. we are graphing. Um, the formula for compound interest. Is this? It's. Oh. Remember the formula that I had up on the board was this. Yeah. Okay. So what does K stand for? It stands for how many times you get. So if you have something called simple interest, um, you get paid once at the end of the year. That's this. That's this one. If you have compound interest, you you get paid many times a year, but. Like if you get paid four times a year, you're, you're only going to get one-fourth of your interest rate each payment. And that helps you get just a little bit more money because you're getting interest on a little bit of interest because you're getting paid a little bit earlier. Does that make sense? Anyway, if I got paid four times a year, I would put a four right here because it's dividing your interest rate to four. But you also have to multiply the number of times you're getting paid times four because you get paid more. You get paid less, but more often. It ends up, when you compound interest, it ends up giving you just a little bit more money. Yes. Anyways, so, 13 is not compound interest because it says annually. So, the initial amount is 10,000. So I'm gonna put that out in front. In parentheses, it says the interest rate is 6%. So what am I going to put in parentheses? Um, one plus. Yeah, okay, I'm not going to put the one plus. Uh, I'm just going to put one point zero six. And then they don't tell us the time, so we're just going to put the T right there, so we can't solve it. Um, they wrote it in function form. Like this, uh, so we don't need to put the K. Okay, no, not on this one because it's simple interest. It's the K is basically a one. You only get paid once a year. So that, yeah, would be unnecessary. It's just the, the original formula I talked about. Okay. Is that the answer? Yeah. It's 10,000. No, there is no answer because they didn't tell us how many years ah, this is lasting. See, so see. this is the answer. We're just writing the function. Oh. If you want to plug in five years and figure out what it would be, then you can do it. Okay. You're only making $10,000 a year, that sucks, dude. No, but $10,000 is the investment. That's not how much money you're making. Okay. Okay. okay, number 15. Uh, $5,000. Okay, and then the interest rate is 3.6%. APR stands for annual percentage rate. That means in a year, how much are you, what percentage are you getting paid? Um, so what do I do with the 3.6%? It'd be... 3.6 or 4.6? Okay. It'd be 0. Well, actually... It's, 3, 6, right? Yeah, actually because I, uh, this is compound interest, we're just going to leave it alone. We're going to change it to 0. 0.036. 0. 0.036. Okay. It says it's compounded monthly. Oh. How many times are we getting paid? Twelve. Well, so you put a twelve there, and you put a twelve there. That's nice. You might want to write that point. It's probably in your book somewhere. Point it out. Maybe in your book somewhere. You get 
just gotta remember to put the, the K underneath the R. It's not that heavy. So where you been using this? Uh, they don't really give you the. They kind of do, but not really. So, <clears throat> yeah, you might want to write this down if you. So, this is for compound. Can't read my own interest. K is number of um, payments in a year. I'm not gonna write that down, but so if you're getting paid monthly, that's twelve times. So we put a twelve right there. So number fourteen says quarterly. How many times a year would that be? Four. Four. Quarters of four, four times sixteen says daily. How many times a year would that be? Three sixty-five. Three sixty-five. Yes, one eighty-two. Okay, so basically you'd be getting like two cents every day, so it wouldn't be you wouldn't be getting paid a lot. Dang, that sucks. Because it it splits your, uh, it would split your interest rate up divided by three sixty-five, so you get be getting paid tiny tiny amounts. Okay, now we're jumping to thirty-five. The only difference on these is you can actually solve them. Because they give you the years. Oh, that's fun. See, this okay. is the kind of stuff I like. Um, $2,500 at 4%. Okay, compounded quarterly, 4%, 10 years. So $2,500 is the initial. Okay, 4%. So I'm going to put 0 0.04. Quarterly is how many times a year? Four. And then Over a span of four, years. four times how many years? Ten. Ten. Uh, ten. So right. basically, you're going to get paid forty times at. And you get basically it'll be like a one percent each time. Thing. Yeah, you have to plug it in on this one. On those most calculators, you can just uh, never mind. Probably you can just retype it. What were you going to say? Well, you can like push up arrow and then go back and change the numbers. Mm -hmm. I got us in the. Uh, let's see. Should be 3,722.16. You gotta be careful with your parentheses and stuff. I didn't get point. I got 3,700. No, I got. I got 37,221. No. Point you, you like missed a decimal or something. Did you put it? I did 0.04. Yeah. I think. Oh, I did 25,000, not 2,500. That would, uh, Instead of putting 4 times 10, you just put 40 right there. But, um, yeah, I think if you plug it in like this, it should work on every calculator. You don't have to put that extra up here? No, because division automatically goes first. What if you had so many investments consistently making that much money? You just live off of it. Okay, so it was supposed to be 37, 22.16. I thought if you had the money to do that, you definitely exist. Did you guys get that on your calculator? Okay. So uh, this took too long. Okay, thirty-seven. I tell you what. I tell you what. I'll make tomorrow's assignment a little bit shorter, and we'll turn them both in on Monday. Okay. Two-day assignment. No. The people win. Don't make me regret my answers. Okay, thirty-seven is. Okay, you guys tell me, it's 26,500, so that's the starting amount. And then it says 6, no, 7.3% compounded daily. So what do I put? 
one plus zero point seven zero yeah zero point zero seven three right point zero seven three yeah. zero seven three and its daily is over three six five daily three sixty five and then it's three six five times is it fifteen years. Seventy nine thousand two hundred and four and sixty nine cents. Sixty seven cents. Oh, six seven cents. <laughs> 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 